Now, mobile devices are so flexible in part because they're portable. We take them with us. But when dealing with a network resource, such as a cloud-based database, that portability can also be limiting because we don't always have an active network connection. And when you can't connect to Azure, or worse, the network drops out while you're talking to Azure, well, you've got a couple of options. So first, you can catch the network exception, maybe present a failure to the user, and just let them know that the app is no longer functional, and it won't be functional until that network connection is restored. Or two, you can provide some sort of support to work with the data offline until that connectivity is restored. Now, the option you choose is, well, it's up to you. It's your choice, and it, it will depend a lot on the data you're working with. Sometimes you simply can't allow users to work with the data locally. Perhaps the logic is all server-side, the data is very sensitive, or the data is very time-critical. But often, the second option of continuing to work offline is really appealing, except for one problem. It's actually pretty hard to do. Now, luckily, we're using Azure as our backend service, and it turns out that Azure has solved a lot of these problems for us. With a few lines of code, we can add support into our app to provide a locally cached version of a given table. And the support has several benefits. When we turn on this feature, our app will interact with the local database rather than waiting for Azure to respond. What does this mean? Well, it means local queries and changes all happen immediately and they don't have to wait for the network IO to complete. And that in turn improves the performance of your application as it interacts with the table. Now this also means that the network is unavailable or even fails during an operation, your app continues to work and you can continue to read and update the records that you know about. Then, when the network connectivity is restored, the client SDK pushes any changes made locally up to Azure. So inserts, deletes, and updates are all sent in the order that we perform them locally. And it will also go in the other direction. It'll pull down changes made to the cloud database by other clients and synchronize them to our local copy. Now, if the idea of automatic synchronization when the network is restored scares you a little, you know, don't worry, uh, you can actually control when synchronization occurs and which direction it occurs in. And this can be really helpful for high cost networks or when the device is roaming. Now, before we turn on an offline synchronization on every table, we really do need to ask whether or not we need it. And now often, you know, the answer is yes, we absolutely do. Uh, but there are some factors to consider. So, you know, adding a local cache, it adds security storage and network requirements to your application. You know, think about having an entire table cached locally on the device. Uh, if it's really large or if it has confidential data in it, this might not be ideal. And records are not immediately written to Azure, but are instead cached locally and then pushed up to Azure as an async task. So these changes are also held locally in a database until they can be synchronized to the server. And if the data you're working with doesn't change very often, or even better, it's read-only, and you can simply pull it down once, then you can just read the data at startup, store it on your own, possibly encrypt the data if needed, and then use your local cache on your own without using the Azure offline support. To add support for offline synchronization, you'll need to add another NuGet package. This time, Microsoft Azure Mobile Client SQLite Store. And this package sits on top and includes the mobile service client SDK to connect to our backend and adds full offline online synchronization. And so just like the core package, you should add this to all head projects and to any project which will utilize any types in the client SDK. Now this package adds all the required assemblies to keep a full copy of a table locally on the device. And to support a local copy of a table, the Azure client will use a locally installed database. It will then download the Azure database and create a local cache of the data on the device. Now by default, it will use SQLite. And this is a popular open source database as the local storage. And the client SDK takes care of all the steps necessary to download the database and store it in SQLite. Now, even though SQLite is the default, the client support is pretty extensible, and you can replace the local storage with something different if needed. So for example, uh, native iOS applications can use core data instead of SQLite. Now, before we get into the mechanics of how to activate and use offline sync, let's have a quick look at all the pieces involved. Of course, we have a remote database. This is our master store of data on Azure. 
We'll also have that local database, most likely SQLite, where we store our local copy of the table and also where the local changes are kept until they're synced. Now, each table that we keep an offline copy of will have a synchronized table interface that we use to do our queries, that's where we update our data, and then push our changes up the remote database. And we'll also use the mobile service client, and it has a property on it named sync context. And we haven't used this yet or set it up, but this is where the real magic happens. The sync context is associated with a mobile client object, such as an I mobile service client, and it tracks changes that are made with sync tables. Now the sync context maintains an operation queue, and this keeps an ordered list of CUD, sometimes said CUD operations. And I said that correctly, because that's create, update, and delete. And these will later be sent to the server. Now the synchronized table objects know about the associated sync context, and they write local changes made to local store to the operation queue that will then be pushed to the server. Now your code will use the sync context property to pull the remote changes back to all of the local tables.